This current Mercury retrograde has absolutely hit me for six. We are also in the middle of an eclipse portal in my 12th house, 12th and 6th house axis. So I'm really feeling it. Anyway, I had big plans to record a brand new episode for you this week, but instead, in true retrograde style, I am bringing you something that I have done before that I think will be really beneficial to you right now. This episode on supercharging your online launches with astrology is going to walk you through some of the key things you can do to really tap into your authentic launch style so that it feels way easier and way stronger and performs better for you. I also talk about how to work with cosmic timing to give your launches a strategic advantage. It is a jam-packed episode. So get comfy, listen up, and find out how to make your launches more powerful and find out how to make better decisions when it comes to building and scaling your online business. So today we're here to specifically talk about how you can use the wisdom of your astrology chart to supercharge your online launches and really get into alignment with your cosmic style. So if you've been feeling like your marketing is a little vanilla or your launches are feeling heavy, it's time to dive deeper into who you really are. Because when you know who you are, what sets you apart, and how to align your marketing strategy with your natural energy, business feels so much easier. And you become a cosmic magnet to your ideal clients and everything starts to flow. And that's certainly what I've noticed for the clients I work with. In fact, they've even told me that one of the things they feel is really affirmed and like hell yes, I can do this because this is who I am. This feels so much better to me now. So you are going to leave this session knowing how to approach your next launch with clarity, with alignment, with more power. I love that. So you might know your star sign as the one you used to look at in the back of your favorite magazine each month. This would have been your sun sign, the zodiac sign. The sun was in when you were born, but that is just the tip of the iceberg. So this is what an actual birth chart looks like in the picture there on the left. You can probably see that there's a lot going on there in that little little image with the circle. Basically, an astrological birth chart is a snapshot of the sky at the time you were born. And it shows where all the planets were in relationship to our view from Earth, including which zodiac signs they were in and which houses or topic areas of life they're involved in for us. So while you might know a little bit about your sun sign, getting to know the placement of some of the other key planets can give you a much more comprehensive understanding of yourself and what's driving you. And This always surprises people when they start to look more deeply into their astrology chart, just how accurate and spot on you can get once you dive into those planet placements. You're not just talking about kind of the generic sun sign astrology. We're really going a little bit deeper. This is going to give you, yeah, this this really comprehensive understanding of yourself, your business, and what motivates you in business. Discovering your cosmic business signature is really using astrology to dive into all these facets of your personal brand, as well as your business motivations and your support needs. So the first place I look is at the sun, moon, and rising signs. Now, if you don't know what these are, I would encourage you to go and set up a free birth chart. I will make sure there is a link to a really a step-by-step YouTube video that I use to show you how to set up a free birth chart. So you will have access to that. We're going to do a little, I guess, astrology 101 on these key planets and points. So the sun, the sun is still really important in astrology. 
It is what makes life possible. It rules our days and our seasons. It's how we tell time, how we generate energy. And in astrology, the sun represents our purpose, our intention, our direction. So it's representing where our ego and what we want out of life or where we are going. It represents that sense of vitality and our evolving higher self. So it's really important to understand this from a from your business perspective because it is your guiding light. It's the guiding mission for your life as well as your business or career in your personal chart. So you want to take note of which zodiac sign the sun was in when you were born to give you an idea of your intention and purpose. So this is that sun sign astrology that you would know from the magazines. The moon, however, the moon is another really important planet or object in astrology. And that's because it's the closest planetary object to earth and it has the greatest impact on us. I mean, we know we're affected by the phases of the moon. We know the earth is certainly affected by the phases of the moon. It it affects our tides. It affects our mood, all of those things. So in astrology, the moon represents our emotions. It represents our needs, our subconscious reactions, and how we are when we are at home. So understanding your moon sign can have a huge impact on the way you do business. When you know what your moon sign wants, this is when you can create experiences that help you stay in your emotional equilibrium and that fulfill you most deeply. So this is really key to your launch style because it's going to show you how you need to be supported. So you're going to want to look at where your moon is placed by both sign and house. We're just talking about signs really today um, and, and energetic signatures or elemental signatures. But if you want to go deeper into astrology, you also want to look at the house placements of all of your planets. Um, and that is a whole other workshop. But if you have, for instance, the moon in an air sign, So if you have the moon in Gemini, Aquarius, or Libra, you might actually need a lot of conversation. You might need to talk out your emotions or intellectualize your emotions in some way. You might also need a lot of planning time. You might need a lot of thinking time. You might need a lot of consultation time before your launch or during your launch because you really feel emotionally fulfilled when you have somebody you can bounce ideas back and forth with. It's that air thinking, heady energy. So that's something to consider. And we're going to dive into obviously the different elements and how that will affect your launch shortly. Your rising sign this is also known as the ascendant. So if you've heard it meant if you've heard it references that That's what it is. It's how others see you. This means it's something you can amplify in your business for more alignment and opportunities. This is really your persona, your personal brand. But in order to know your rising sign, you have to know the exact time or around about the exact time you were born within the hour or so, because that's the constellation that was or the zodiac sign that was rising over the horizon at that specific time of day. That is a really personal point to the time and place of your birth. So this is this can be quite a game changer. Once you understand your rising sign, if you've always known yourself as, for instance, you know, a Pisces sun sign, knowing your rising sign can really change and help you to understand yourself on a on such a more profound level. For instance, you know, you might have known your sun sign as Pisces, but you may have something like a Leo rising. Now, a Leo rising person is going to show up much differently to the traditional traits we associate with Pisces. You might love to wear bright, bold colors, and you might notice that people, people really take notice when you walk into a room. You might 
find that, you know, you can talk to people or people come to you from all walks of life or people, people kind of are attracted to you. You feel comfortable on stage. You feel comfortable getting visible. And this is, is kind of feels at odds with your sun sign of Pisces. But if you understand your rising sign and you know that that's in a fire, that's a fire rising sign or especially a Leo rising, then you will see that actually being on stage comes quite natural to you. Being, being visible comes quite naturally to you. And this is really critical to know about yourself when it comes to your business. You will know what activities you can leverage in your business. Okay. So that's the rising sign. The next step, we're going into the personal planets now. So Mercury. Mercury is such a great planet to know uh, in business, particularly online business. This is the planet of communication, thinking, transport, and trade. It's the messenger planet. So looking at your Mercury can tell us how you best get your point across and the communication areas you might find a little bit more difficult in business as well. So again, this can be another light bulb moment when you realize the way you think and communicate might not be in in alignment with your sun sign at all. For example, You might be an Aries sun sign, but you have Mercury and Taurus. Those signs have very different energies and approaches. So this is another place where it's really good to have that kind of understanding of your astrology chart so that you can start to dive deeper into how you work and how you best communicate your ideas and how long it takes you to process new information or what what ways you process information. For instance, someone with a Taurus Mercury or an earth sign Mercury is much more likely to to need to write things down to process them because it actually needs that kind of tangible flow of ideas through the body. That's really helpful for earth signs in order for them to learn and retain information. They have a slower processing speed, which is not necessarily a bad thing. It's just, you know, Understanding that about yourself can make things a lot easier because you put things in place so that you can learn better, so that you can communicate better, so that things flow more easily for you. Venus. Venus, one of my favorite planets. It is Venus Day as I record this. Venus is considered to be the planet of love, relationships, and money because it is also about what we value. So the zodiac sign placement of Venus is related to what appeals to you in business relationships, in your pricing strategy and in your environment, in your, you know, this is the connective energy in your business, but it's also a bit of financial energy too and how you relate to money and value, how you price yourself is very closely related to this Venus energy. So when you take note of where Venus is in your chart, this can give you an idea of how you feel good in business, what turns you on about the work that you do and the ways you generate money and resources and also the ways, as I said, that you price your offers. Mars, another key planet in business. Mars represents action, energy, stamina, drive, motivation. This is a really critical planet because it helps us to know our business and launch strategy. Mars gives us a really good insight into how we like to take action and therefore our best strategic approach in business. He can also show you where you might come against some frustrations or reactivity in your business as well, because Mars is going to show us not only how we take action, but how we react. So keep that in mind when you are looking at your own astrology chart. Once you've kind of got this idea of the planets and where they're placed, you know, you really need to look at what zodiac sign each of these planets and points are in your chart. Then I want you to think about or look into your elemental signature. So what signs are these planets in and what elements are those signs? So here we have a little infographic over here 
on the right, which shows you the fire signs, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, the air signs, Aquarius, Gemini, Libra, the earth signs, Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn, and the water signs, Pisces, Scorpio, and Cancer. So you're going to want to look at which, what, what zodiac signs do you have in which elements and which are the most predominant in your chart? So do you have a lot of planets in these fire signs? Do you have Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius, you know, planets in those points? Do you have planets in the air signs? Do you have planets in the water or earth? Like where are the majority of your planets or points? Now, not everybody is going to have one element really stand out. There will be a lot of people who have a very strong um, focus. So, you know, for instance, I, in my chart, I have a very strong earth focus, but there are elements of, I do have the other elements as well. Some people have a very balanced chart where they have, you know, bits from all four quadrants. But I want you to consider what your your main element is. Even if you have a little bit of, you know, even if say you're predominantly earth, but you have a little bit of air, have a, have a look at where your predominant energy lies. And that's going to help you as we go through the rest of the presentation, the rest of this workshop. I would still go back and have a look at the other elements as well, particularly if you have a more balanced chart. But focus on your predominant energy first and then kind of go back in and have a look at the other elements for a little bit of nuance. So there's three zodiac signs that correspond with each element. So we've got, as I said, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius for fire, Aquarius, Gemini, Libra for air, Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer for water, and Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn for earth. So have a think about that. Now, if you are a fire entrepreneur. That means you have significant planets or points in the signs of Aries, Leo, or Sagittarius. I call these people the go-getting charismatic change makers. And that's because fire signs have this innate ability to ignite enthusiasm and bring energy to their work. They embody creativity, spontaneity, and inspiration, and they're often a guiding force for those around them. But that fire energy can also burn out of control if it's not channeled properly. In your marketing, fire sign energy has that charisma and magnetism. You're great at getting on stage and getting people excited about your work. And we are going to dive into launch strategies for fire entrepreneurs shortly. But I just want to give that general overview of the fire energy. The air energy, if you have significant planets or points in Aquarius, Gemini, or Libra, I call these people the innovative thought leaders. You have a curious mind. You have great communication skills. You have a natural gift for expressing big ideas and captivating your audience. Air sign people thrive in speaking engagements, whether that's at an event, during a webinar, or even on podcasts. They have great social skills because they keep things in perspective and they don't get ruffled easily. So when it comes to your marketing style, speaking opportunities, either at in-person events or online webinars, podcasts, even audio blasts are excellent for you to use this, this air energy. Next up, we have earth entrepreneurs. This is for people who have a number of planets or points in the signs of Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. I call these people the focus determined implementers. If you've got a lot of earth energy in your chart, it's likely that you have this methodical, consistent approach. You love to fix or edit things. You have a knack for knowing the strategies that are going to work over the long term, and it's much easier for you to stay consistent, right? Some people you know, for instance, the fire and air signs find it a little more difficult to stay consistent in the earth signs because they're great at implementing. Earth signs are great at implementing. They're great at creating tangible results. So they like to be thorough and well-planned. 
They want to do things well. They don't rush in. They want to think things through first. You know, however, there is always the challenge with earth signs that they can take a little too long to move on opportunities. So in marketing, earth sign entrepreneurs are fantastic at planning and structuring content. The water entrepreneur. This involves a lot of planets or points in the signs of Pisces, Cancer, or Scorpio. What I love about these entrepreneurs is that they are emotionally connected. They're emotionally connected to their customers, but also to their end game, to their reason for being in business, right? Water sign entrepreneurs are in touch with emotions of themselves and others, They are more empathetic or not necessarily more, but they are especially empathetic. They're intuitive and responsive. And this means they can connect to their clients or customers in a way that's going to reflect that bigger vision in a way that feels really, you know, more compassionate, that feels very connected. Water signs are also more fluid than the other energy types. They can kind of take on many forms and adapt to others because water has no form of its own. That means they can literally go with the flow more easily than some of the other signs. But they're also a little bit sensitive because of that, because they're so adaptable, because they feel other people's energy and they can reflect whoever they're with. So when it comes to marketing, water entrepreneurs are excellent at developing intuitive connections and content. This is their superpower. So when you are designing your cosmic launch strategy, this is what I would recommend for the fire entrepreneurs. Fire entrepreneurs are going to bring that unique dynamic energy to their launches. They're going to have that natural enthusiasm and they're going to be more comfortable being visible than the other energy types. Fire signs thrive on that quick, intense, spontaneous activity. So you can harness this with live events, with impromptu video interviews, with dynamic webinars or exciting, you know, five-day challenges or, you know, getting people on board in this kind of fun and enthusiastic way. You want to find opportunities to show your audience your passion and your zest for your offerings. They will be swept up in the excitement along with you. If you're an air entrepreneur, what I would recommend for your cosmic launch strategy is that you really allow yourself plenty of communication. You need to be able to articulate your thoughts clearly and thoroughly. You might craft well thought out podcast content, write compelling emails, or record a series of videos. Air signs thrive when they have plenty of space to communicate effectively. So you want to look for opportunities to use your voice, communicate your ideas powerfully with intention, like with pre-recorded videos, with podcasts, PR interviews, or email campaigns that allow your thoughts to shine during your launch. Earth entrepreneurs in a launch, they love to be planned, structured, and grounded. You really thrive when you have those clear steps to follow and tangible outcomes to achieve. So during your launches, it's important for you to focus on those detailed planning, that detailed planning approach. You want to write social posts or emails in advance. You want to review. You want to allow time for review and editing because this is an essential step for you to ensure everything aligns perfectly, to ensure you feel really good about your launch. Earth signs also find comfort in tangible elements. They find, you know, I guess, security by creating workbooks, step-by-step presentations and structured content. That's going to help you to ground your launch down, your, your launch or your promotion strategy and provide that solid foundation for your business success. Water entrepreneurs, as I said, feel deeply connected to their emotions and the emotions of others. But so they tend to be more introverted. During your launch, you might find it a little bit challenging to be visible on a large scale or to be visible like spontaneously, like a a fire sign person. But you uh, have this superpower when it comes to creating a launch atmosphere that feels nurturing, that feels personal and feels 
empathetic and really connecting with your audience on a profound emotional level. So you can make the most of that by creating opportunities for activities that allow you to connect with your emotions, with the emotions of your customers, with your body, things like meditation, breathing exercises, or even, you know, creating opportunities for personal one-on-one interactions with your potential clients or customers. The next step for creating an amazing launch is to harness cosmic timing. So working with the lunar phases is the number one strategy I suggest to all my clients who want to work with astrology in their launches to get a little boost. And that's because when you work with these lunar phases, just like you would work with them if you were gardening or farming or surfing and you're working with kind of the moon and the tides and the, you know, the water in our, in our bodies, in our earth, all of that stuff. The moon phases have an amazing impact on growth when the moon is in a waxing phase or a building phase. So if you want to start a promotional period, you want to start at an, around a new moon or after a new moon when the moon is building. This is going to be ideal for planning or starting things to, to get things off the ground because the moon's energy is building. It's allowing and helping things to grow. Full moons, on the other hand, are a great time for culmination. They're a great time to close cart. Make They're a great time to have a high impact event, sales event, or the end of your sales sequence. The waning part of the moon is when you really want to be tying up, wrapping things up. It's not an amazing, you don't want to be launching, generally you don't want to be launching after a full moon because then you're going into the waning cycle of the moon the moon's energy is decreasing right so consider that really consider that that can give you you know that lovely boost to the energy and the growth of the launch now planning for retrograde times is also another amazing tip you you don't want to be afraid of things like mercury retrograde Mercury retrograde can be notorious for those communication and tech mishaps. But if you use that time powerfully, you can really improve your processes throughout the year. If you avoid launching something brand new during a retrograde, that would be ideal. You don't want to launch something brand new. You can launch something you've launched before and improve products or online offers for sure, because retrograde energy is all about redoing. It's that revision time. It's a great time for research as well, market research, refinement, updating your content or sales copy and reconnecting with existing clients. So it's like a beautiful time to re-engage people in what you're doing. You can definitely work with that energy. The next step is to move with the cosmos, not against it. So consider your sun or your rising sign and plan your launch when the sun is in a compatible sign. So for instance, if you're a Leo sun sign or a Leo rising sign, you might want to consider launching during Aries or Sagittarius season, another fire energy that's going to amplify your natural fiery magnetism. The sun is going to give a lovely aspect to your sign. It's going to connect in with that. You can also work with beneficial planet alignments like trines and sextiles. Now that's a little bit of a next level astrology strategy. This is what I work with um, on my clients' launches. But if you know the where Jupiter is in the sky, for instance, at the moment, it's in Taurus. How is that connecting with other planets? What can you, how can you take advantage of the movement of the planets right now to give you that enhanced creativity, connection, abundance? If you launch during those alignments, those nice alignments, you can infuse your activities with harmonious energy. And that's going to make it easier for you to resonate with your audience, to connect with your audience, you know, easier for you to get the traction that you're looking for. You're not going to feel that 
you know, if you're launching when the energy is a little bit lighter, buoyant, it may help the launch be lighter and more buoyant, right? And the final step here is to work with your own chart. So you want to consider your own transits, that's the planet movements and progressions. That's like the symbolic movements in your own chart that are happening for you during the launch window. So when you're planning out your launches, you want to look for positive alignments to your natal planets because that's going to suggest opportunities for personal growth and expansion. So by understanding those cosmic influences and tailoring your launch strategy to them, you can tap into the flow of helpful energy rather than pushing up against the currents. Like I said, rather than feeling the heaviness, you can kind of get into the tide, get into the tide and flow with the tide, right? But of course, while astrology provides guidance and it can provide a little bit of assistance to your launch, your passion, dedication, and your strategic efforts are still fundamental to your success. Your offer needs to be on point. Your messaging needs to be on point, right? You know, and your launch strategy needs to be on point for you as well. So where to from here? Well, what I would recommend you do if you've been watching this is you go and download my Cosmic Business Toolkit. That's going to give you even more ideas on how to work with your cosmic signature, you know, more on how to market yourself depending on your elemental signature and even who to have on your team, you know, who you might need to um, get support from. It would also be great and really helpful for you if you're interested in astrology and business to listen to my podcast, The Cosmic Business Breakthrough. I have weekly episodes where I go through even more stuff on how to harness astrology for business success. And I have great guests on there as well. And finally, if you want to take this much deeper and more personalized to you and really get to know yourself and your business on a deep transformative level, book in a one-on-one session with me. I'm going to guide you to create a marketing plan that feels powerful and authentic and helps you do that amazing transformative work that you're here for. So thank you very much. All the best at building your amazing online business.